Okay. All right. All right, so now that we're recording, uh, just real quick again, Brian Manzo, uh, graduate of Cal Poly 2006, um, formerly um, involved with SWIFT, and uh, my main focus for this, this talk is about different pathways to get into tech. Uh, and many of you being involved now, it's great to see you here. We need you, whether it be for cybersecurity, information security, whether it be for infrastructure cloud, uh, whether it be for government DOD or commercial. Um, we need a lot of professionals to be involved and passionate about this industry. We're going through a cycle of um, older generation retiring and we need uh, new talent to come in. So, all right. Anyone familiar with main time between failures, calculation, basics? So in industry, it's kind of the, the average time between, sorry, I don't know if there's double feedback on the mic. Does this sound okay? Cool, okay. Um, basically, what you want to do is if you have a failure, you try to learn from it, have lessons, have uh, takeaways, and, and uh, improve you know, the platform, the service, or the incident, and say it's, a uh, systematic compromise or something along those lines. That's me, 2001. I wanted to be a DJ. And my goal at that time was to be a famous DJ or maybe a dancer. Uh, but I still had a successful career with DJing because the most important thing that happened from that was I met my wife. And so last minute, they needed a DJ uh, for her sister's wedding. And through a friend of a friend at Cal Poly, I was lucky to come in and save the day. And that was the most important thing that I got from DJing. And, uh, you know, I thought I wanted to do uh, dance as well. I took dance classes, music classes at Cal Poly. And like I said, I was like a super senior. I stayed here until I took every credit I could take until I was no longer allowed to re-register. Um, but that's okay. It's, it's part of learning. Maybe you want to go to the medical field. And we need medical professionals. There's any different ways that people enter technology, leave technology, but there's all these great different areas that you can be in. So let's see if I can get it. Folks, I'm ready. So I gotta give you guys an opinion. And it's hard to have a meeting when you're out of lunch. And you work in the industry, you're out of a remote, so I'm full time. And it's hard to get to the So I'm going to have to ask a little bit of your attention. All right, cool. I got your attention. You good? All right, cool. All right. He doesn't want to give up. I don't know. Just... Okay, so my first tech job was part time, and it was doing this. Does anybody remember dial up internet? Okay, I'm the guy that had to check if the handshake worked for him to get to the internet. And this is in a time when the computers weren't that great. It could be problems with your internet browser. And I kid you not, one of my calls was, somebody deleted the internet off my computer. You need to fix it. What, what, does anybody know, anyone think they know what that means? Anyone? No. Go for it. That's it, that's it. They deleted their own browser and they thought that we did that remotely over dial up. No, we don't, it's not even possible, but Customer service is one of the areas I, I first got into with tech, and there's a lot that you learn about. So if anyone's work, food service or phone support, it's important to keep those skills. Because you may get to a bigger organization and you will deal with people that think they know everything and they don't. So, all right, get it back.
All right, office space, processes. You're gonna have things that you like or don't like about some way they're gonna do something. If you have an incident that happens, it may be a nice, elegant platform that you take all your blocks and send it into. It may not be. It may be some older system that could very, you know, very well be antiquated. So bear in mind, some industries might be behind, and you might be the newer generation to come and say, hey, there's a more modern way to do this. There's a different technology platform to do this. So again, we need you. My first tech job as a career job was a full-time society. And on the day one that my boss is introducing the um, the different um, I'll just try to get the feedback. Um, me, all the employees go to the office. I encounter a uh, an employee that says, Hey, can you grab me a coffee? He hands me a couple bucks and I go get coffee for this, this person. And then I'll find it that we because thank you, I think I worked a little bit. It felt really like I had just completed CCDC. My first team that I put together got sixth place. Yeah, I got some visibility and tag in my resume. I'm like, oh, I have a design job. And then this guy's like, go grab me coffee. So the first 20 minutes, I couldn't work. I couldn't count that as a failure and just walk out. But I did. And luckily, I was able to level up on cloud, cloud skills. I got the migrated to the cloud. I made a uh, very secure v direct VPN to their infrastructure. Um, and I learned a lot of different things that, that was a stepping stone for what I needed. So your average time between failures, it might be quick, it might be longer, but just be patient with your threshold. It's good to experiment. It's great to be here and experiment now before doing some jobs that you may or may not like. So collaborate with like-minded students, keep going with that path. All right, so let's take a trip. When I, when I first got to uh, this area, I was a DJ. So of course, I had to work at a music store. Wasn't really gonna quite pan out, so. Next thing I found was a job that had benefits. So I was, I was a union guy and I was loading airplanes at 3 a.m. right here at Ontario Airport. Outdoors, running equipment, not fun. But for a college student, it was an okay job because it was 3 a.m. to 7. So either I could party and then still pull an all-nighter and come in, or I could sleep for a couple hours and then go in. But it was crazy. Some of the times I had a 9 o'clock class and had to drive straight from work to go in. So it was not fun. But the most important thing that happened at UPS was the two friends that I made. One is still my tech mentor to this day, who I'm appreciative of. Uh, the other was a Swift member who introduced me to CCDC. They weren't, at the time we had first met, involved yet. It was when they, they moved uh, later on in their career. Um, so my roommate was with Costco. He said, hey, they're opening a Costco in Hawaii. Let's go to Hawaii. And I'm like, that's cool. But again, my, my wife that I met for DJing, uh, you know, had a relationship going. I was like, no. But his interesting story is he's, he's become a, a data guy for Costco and he works for corporate. He's been super successful as well. So keeping in touch with your friends, your roommates that maybe you don't have a good roommate. You never know where they might end up. You never know where you might end up to help collaborate, help them out too. Uh, so the tech support job. We find communications no longer in business, or I think they're required. Um, learned a lot with, with customer service. It helps immensely for the people that you support, whether it be a large commercial organization or a small business. Uh, next, please. Okay, and for this, we find wasn't working. I thought, hey, a little home Wi Fi company, maybe I can use some QA. Didn't quite work out either, but I had a supervisor. From there, that helped me get a government um, DOD gig down the line. So again, connections that you make. Uh, so what first is that we did, they, they did um, interesting things with indoor positioning. I uh, was fortunate to learn a lot about um, uh, moving on to cloud and other infrastructure. Then I had an opportunity to go to Christian University. And what was tough is when I got on board for this opportunity, my last job said, hey, we need you back. And they offered, a, I wasn't even trying to push for, you know, increase in salary or anything. And it was very compelling to go back. But could I have taken this as a failure if I didn't take it? Who knows? I, I ended up staying at Azusa 
And what was helpful was I learned large data center infrastructure and other skill sets that I just would not would have gotten at the, the other position. So again, you're gonna bounce around, that's fine, but it's trial and error. You're not gonna get it right. Luckily, if you're here with Swift and learning the skill sets you wanna be in there, you wanna be in, you can get it right the first time. For me, I didn't get on board into this arena until later, so. So here I am in contracting, and there's a lot of different ways uh, this contracting um, approach works. You, it, they could be, hey, you want to land that big with a with a bigger company. Uh, this could be a pathway there. You start as a contractor, and you get an opportunity to go government or civilian. Great way to go. A lot of you may just go straight into, um, you know, those either government entities or larger contractors. That's great too. But what's important about this is that it gives you different visibility to technology that you may or may not like. It gives you visibility to um, what areas and programs are growing. And at the end of the day, there is an important element of your salary and benefits. And some places they work better than others. So again, all these different things that could be successes or failures, these are the things you're learning along the way. So now a friend of mine that's my tech mentor is at Dracos. And they're a startup at the time. I'm super excited that he's like, he's saying, hey, I need your help with some automation. Come join our team. And they had a separate interview panel for him. So it wasn't just like a referral. I got in. And, I, and I'm just ecstatic. I'm like, oh, I made it. I, I, this is my first startup. You know, I'm going to be able to help them. They have a great mission. There's, they're, they're still a good niche in what they do. They're a very talented team um, in, in the area of operational technology that they do. But it didn't work out. And I could have taken that really hard. And I could have, you know, really just been like, you know what, maybe tech isn't for me. Maybe this isn't the, the right place I want to be. And, you know, maybe there's something else. This led me to uh, containerization and other skill sets and workloads around that. And I, that's where uh, Kubernetes came into um, to my wheelhouse. And, and that's where I've been successful since. Uh, and I really enjoy it. So the different companies where I've, I've done that for have been um, very interesting programs, and just for the you know not uh, disclosing you know, NDA and proprietary things, it's been very fun and interesting to do this in a lot of either restricted or classified networks where you have no internet. So imagine you want to use your tools, your methodologies that you normally do connected to the regular commercial internet, and you can't do it. Now you got to build all your own infrastructure to make that happen in a controlled environment. So. Um, I was very fortunate to get into that space and that's helped um, elevate that skill um, well, a lot further. So again, those connections, they matter, they do. Whether they're friendships, roommates, other college students, um, again, whether it be Swift or other things. Um, one thing I recommend is when you do land your job, it's great to be there, Try, try to figure out where you want to level up or um, you know get promoted. It's also important to see um, what's an industry to compare. Are you at the market rate? Are you working on the tech, tech stack that you want? Are you working on the discipline that you want? Are they keeping you interested in different projects and things you could work on? So when you get into kind of your mid to senior level type of place, it doesn't hurt to apply to other companies and kind of just see what's out there. And so I'm just going to share some of my lessons learned from it. Um, Mandy at FireEye, super fun interview. Um, just didn't have the offensive security um, skill sets. And I, I went into the certification to try to get, you know, kind of more on the red team side. I'm, a, I'm more of a blue team. I've been successful as blue team and um, you know, infrastructure. But, you know, I, I gave my hand at it and that was a good lesson learned. I didn't want to be on the pen test side. It's just, it's, that's not where my uh, interest is. And so uh, SpaceX, it was more the blue team side, but work culture. They're all full on site. Um, and I was looking long term to be fully remote because that's flexible for family. I, you know, I have three kids and full remote opportunities were my next goal for you know my own personal uh, career. And so down the line, that's what I've achieved and, and had for the last few years. Southern California Edison, they're partnered really well with Cal Poly Pomona. A lot of undergrads um, intern or you know go into Southern California Edison. Um, there, I think I just, to be honest, I just bombed the first interview. I think that was all it was. I think I looked at 
who the the who was in the interview panel, and I you know researched kind of what their disciplines were, and I think I just didn't do enough research. So again, if you have failure, it's fine, but you need to have lessons you, you take away from that. Uh, so similarly, I interviewed on their operational technology side, um, and then Nava was just uh, not organized. They, they told me there's gonna be a lab coding exercise. I think I kind of knew what, uh, what kind of parser I needed to make and I just uh, didn't prep for it. But again, got to learn like, um, well, you know, make sure if it's a company you really care about and opportunity you really want, that you, you put best effort to, you know, moving in that direction. Uh, so similarly for Catch and Seeker and uh, Starbucks, um, Starbucks, what was interesting is the hiring manager really liked my personality, but I was upfront with them when they said, you know, it's very specific technologies that I just didn't have. And I was transparent about it and said, hey, I don't have this today, but I can learn it. And that's another important factor when you're going through different jobs. Some of them have these crazy requirements where you need like five years of experience of some specific thing. And you're an undergrad who just got out of college. How can you expect that even from an internship level, you have that? And so having your own lab and building your own opportunity to show proficiency is key. Um, and so what was, what was good about that is said, hey, keep in touch. If you do level up in those skill sets, then you know, call us back. And now it's not a cold call to see, do I want to try to join your team? It's a status check of, hey, it's been a year. Here's where I'm at. Um, how does that look for where you're at and then where you're at as a team? So again, these are opportunities you can have maybe not immediately, but in the future. Uh, and then Tanium, interesting platform, and same thing as like Starbucks. Just I, I learned what you know technologies I needed to be more proficient at. So, so your own main time to failures, not gonna be like mine, not gonna be like your your counterpart next to you, but you gotta learn how to take failure. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's one thing I learned with, with some of the, the government and former service members. And real quick, for anyone who is active duty or former service member, thank you for your service. I have worked with a lot of um, amazing individuals um, within that space. Um, and so thank you. Uh, I you know, definitely want to be appreciative of that. But you, you got to have lessons learned or takeaways. Um, Dragos, thought I was at my pinnacle helped me to push me in the right direction of the right, the right technology that I need to work on. So um, the one other thing is within, um, within Dragos, I think one of the other lessons learned is that I had good rapport with other departments and it maybe I could have done well in a different department, but I was just uh, too intimidated or didn't quite feel confident to try to shift. A lot of times in tech, you just need to ask. Um, I've had, uh, either junior admins or other people that said, hey, like, I think your team is more interested on what the tech we're working on over here. Um, how does it look? It's like, well, let's try it. A lot of times, if you have a good company that has pair programming, if they have collaboration opportunities or ways to switch between different departments, you know, that, that's an important factor as well in the different jobs and opportunities you look at. Because it's not all about salary. That's part of it, benefits and all that. But it's also about who you work with and the mission that you're trying to accomplish. And so some of the, the programs I worked on were, you know, Dracos has a mission of, of um, um, securing, uh, what is it? I'm trying to remember their, um, um, I don't remember their, uh, something was said in the securing some of the I'm, I'm blanking now, but there, there are good missions to support, both also on the government and DOD side. Um, but make sure you learn from mistakes. Uh, so Cal Poly session A, I thought I was gonna be into music and DJing. Didn't happen, that's okay. Is that, oh, am I good on time? Okay, five minutes, cool. Um, I ended up with, design was my second degree because it was flexible for um, attending online remote. And uh, I did IEEE, so the Institute of Electrical, uh, electronics and electrical engineers. That's where I made my CCDC team. I was fortunate to have great members that went on to do awesome things. I got a network engineer at NASA, another guy that's at AT&T. Um, no one worked for AWS. You know, not not uncommon to 
you know, to, to move into those spaces. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Competing is a lot of fun. So if there are some of you who haven't competed yet or done even NCL or some other uh, remote competitions, it's, it's a great way to collaborate with students and learn your success. So I highly encourage that. Um, I did um, for a bit um, the League of Professional System Administrators. There was an LA chapter that I was a part of, and that was uh, that was doable when I before I had a family and kids. But you know, as I've progressed in my career, it's you know, it's a little bit more challenging. So again, for here being um, a lunch and <laughs> uh, this actually fit for my schedule and availability, I'm appreciative of being here and having this opportunity to kind of share my experience. And if any of you have questions about you know looking at contracting or looking at different parts of government or DOD, things like that. Um, there's a lot of programs out there. And I know it's kind of scary hearing about other companies and layoffs and other things, but there's an initiative, I think they, it got rebranded. It was from the Air Force. Uh, and um, I think it got rebranded as Software Factories Coalition, um, but it's a lot of different companies, you know, both you know startups and, and long-term companies that are trying to modernize um, processes and systems for you know, government. And um, that's another great uh, way to get into that space if that's what you're looking for. So that's what else to, to look to look into. All right, so just for the job you want, so if you want to work from home, I don't suggest that in a work environment, but as you progress to where you want to be, um, try to look forward to the things that move you in that direction. Um, one of my goals was to have an offer a vehicle and uh, I achieved that. And so uh, I needed different costumes because I'm a big geek about dress park and Ghostbusters and, uh, and that's been one of my goals I achieved with getting into tech. So I wanted to leave like one or two minutes just for any basic questions or anything else. You can talk to me offline, but you know, again, thank you for having me to you know, share, um, you know, in my tech journey.